I don't know if you can see Vancouver in the distance, but I've uh, just been up for some cross country skiing and the uh, sun's going down, so I'm heading in. Uh, I thought I might choose this as the opportunity to announce my study plans for the next little while. I'm gonna go on a 90, continue my 90 day challenge where I'm doing both Arabic and Farsi. So that'll be January, February, March. Then April, May, I'm gonna focus on Slavic languages because I'm going to Ukraine in May. Uh, I've been uh, providing some uh, monetary assistance to an NGA in Eastern Ukraine. I'm gonna go visit these ladies that are helping vulnerable people over there. So I'm gonna have two weeks in Ukraine. So I'm gonna be speaking Ukrainian and Russian there. So I'm gonna ramp up to that by reading novels and literature and see if I can improve my accuracy in cases and stuff in Slavic languages. Uh, oh, and at the end of my 90 days of Arabic and Farsi, I will do an interview in each one of those languages just to see how far I've come. And then later in the year, I'm going to do a 90-day uh, concentration on Asian languages, Japanese, Korean, and maybe some Chinese, because I'm going to go to the Polyglot Conference in Fukuoka. So I'm going to ramp up. So I'm going to be doing some Middle Eastern, some Slavic, and some Asian. Uh, so, just to update you on that, and uh, now I get better head down because my son's waiting for me. Bye for now. And this is the following morning as I look out on Eagle Harbor. The sun is rising, but there's clouds off in the distance coming off Vancouver Island. Some kind of a hovercraft making a lot of noise. And uh, another day dawns here in Vancouver. Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. So, uh, lovely skiing yesterday on uh, Cypress Mountain. And uh, I mentioned that, uh, you know, I was planning for my upcoming year as far as language learning is concerned. And of course, these plans are, plans are somewhat subject to change, but I think I'm going to stick to it. So, uh, just to go over what that means in detail. Uh, and remember that, that language learning to me is a matter of, a, of an input strategy. You have to have a strategy on what is going to constitute sort of beneficial and compelling input at different stages in our learning. So for the first period now, in fact, it's what I've been doing for the last uh, quite a few months, where I'm focusing on Arabic and Farsi, uh, I'm going to spend uh, most of my time on the mini stories and maybe who is she. Uh, which is what I have been doing. Some of the mini stories I've listened to 30, 40 times. As I get to the later ones, of course, I haven't listened to them as often, but I hope to get them up to 30, 40 times. And the goal with the mini stories, and I found that mini stories, I can't say it enough, so powerful uh, because of the repetition. Uh, each story is four minutes, five minutes long. The key vocabulary repeats four or five times, six times in each story. Um, they're not tremendously interesting, but I find that because I'm trying to get a hold of the uh, of the structures of the language, and because these stories include the most frequent verbs of the language, so all of the I want, I need, I have to, I go, I come, I take, all of these things uh, come up regularly. That's they're built around these most common verbs. These stories and sort of the in order to, therefore, because, why, since, all of those kinds of words that you need to sort of structure what it is you want to say, they're all in there and they're repeated and repeated. And so every time I listen, even a story that I've listened to 30 times, I'll pick something up new in terms of a structure. Uh, or there are words that I still don't quite get, so I, or I've forgotten, so I have to go back in and read it. Uh, sometimes when I'm reviewing the stories, I'll just go through the flashcards for that story because I know most of the words, I just want to again focus my attention on those words and, and phrases that I've had trouble with. So with Arabic and Farsi, very much focused on the mini stories. Uh, and those are to me compelling input because I'm trying to get a, a toehold in, in, in the language. Now, when I go to my, you know, warming up for my visit to Ukraine, the sort of Slavic period, uh, with the Slavic languages, I want to get, I want to become more accurate. I want to become more accurate in the use of the language and the use of cases and the use of uh, verbs of motion and this kind of thing. And therefore, with the Slavic languages, 
I will again go through our mini stories, all 60 of them. We have them in Ukrainian, we have them uh, in, in Russian, we have them in Czech, Slovak, Polish, whatever, but we have them in those two languages. I will also regularly visit the grammar rule, not to try to remember it, but to remind myself. And uh, we have, by the way, at Link now, we've developed a bunch of simplified grammars, like maximum 6,000 word grammars of a bunch of languages, including Ukrainian and Russian. So I'll be going through that again, just to hopefully try to trigger my brain to try to get better at on the fly, being able to produce a correct case and the correct form of the verb. But with the Russian and Ukrainian, I will vary that sort of mini story exposure to uh, reading literature. I have so much material, especially in Russian, but even in Ukrainian history books, literature, where I have the audiobook and the text. I can import the text into Link and I can acquire more words. My biggest problem in, uh, in, in Russian, I have a lot of words, but I still struggle with the structure. So I'll be combining those two things. With Ukrainian, I think I can, again, I have a lot of words in Ukrainian. But again, I want to, and I want to see if I can clearly distinguish in my mind between Ukrainian and Russian. So that'll be my focus with the Slavic languages. Then later on in the year, as I prefer, prepare for my visit to, to, a, to Asia, to Japan, possibly Korea, I'm going to be doing Korean with a Korean. I still don't have that confidence that I can just talk on a variety of subjects. So with Korean, I have to A, get better at my use of the structure and B, I have to acquire more words. So with Korean, I will also do the mini stories. And I will, again, the problem with Korean, it's a bit like the, uh, getting back to my Arabic. I, I can do the mini stories, but when I go to the next level, which is genuine, authentic, you know, podcast from Al Jazeera or whatever it is, it's just too big a, leap, big a leap. And the same is true with Korean. We have some podcasts at Link on politics, on literature. It's too big a leap. So I have to try to move myself closer to where I can do these uh, more difficult, authentic and more interesting types of content. So I kind of be varying it more. Whereas with the Arabic and Farsi, I'm, I'm predominantly uh, mini stories. With my Korean, I'll be kind of 50-50. Uh, with Japanese and Chinese, I'll be looking to increase my vocabulary, uh, reading things on link where I can easily look things up. Uh, I have some audiobooks uh, and some other audio material in Chinese and Japanese for which I have the texts. So that's what I'll be doing there. So that's just to give you a sense of how my input strategy, is, you know, the, the kind of input strategy that I have. And it's of course dependent on where I am in the language. So that's all I had to say and um, see you later.